Welcome everybody. My name is Saskia Hiltemann and now I will give you a very brief overview of metagenomic sequencing in Galaxy. So let's start with why we study the microbiome. So there are different reasons to different applications. One big application is healthcare research. So we as humans are full of microorganisms um, everywhere in our body, from our skin to our gut to our mouths, our noses, even our eyes. Um, they all are hosts to um, many microorganisms and these microorganisms can affect uh, our health. Uh, they can affect how well drugs work um, and things like that. Um, in fact, there is so many genetic material from these microorganisms that it's sometimes referred to as our second genome. Um, these are very rough estimates and there's some um, debate about these, but there are approximately 10 times more cells than you, containing 100 times as many genes than as you, uh, and thousands of different species. Uh, and these do affect uh, our health. So these are important to study. Uh, another application area can be environmental studies. So uh, microbes in the soil can affect how well certain plants and animals uh, thrive. And this study can help improve agriculture in, uh, in regions that otherwise may be un inhospitable to certain uh, plants. Now there are two main approaches when we do microbiome analysis. There is the shotgun method. This is where we take uh, all genetic material from all these different microorganisms and we sequence it all together. So you can think of this as each organism um, being a jigsaw puzzle. If we do shotgun sequencing, we cut all the DNA, uh, the genetic sequence into smaller pieces, into reads, and these uh, land in one big pile and then we have to disentangle them. So you can imagine we have a lot of data so we can get more information, but this process of uh, analyzing the data and reconstructing the different genomes is also more complicated. And of course, more costly because we sequence more. The other main approach is amplicon sequencing. So this is a more targeted approach. We, instead of sequencing all the genetic material, we specific, uh, sequence only a specific gene. So let's say in this analogy, we would look only at the corner pieces. Now these pieces are easy to recognize because they're different than the other pieces. Um, we have obviously less information, so we can't reconstruct the entire picture uh, of each puzzle, but it may tell us enough uh, enough information for us to tell things like, okay, this is a nature puzzle, or this is an artwork. Um, obviously this, um, we have less information, so we can say less about the uh, microorganisms. Uh, it's also simpler to perform and cheaper and less complex to analyze. So these two, shotgun and amplicon sequencing, are the two main approaches in microbiome analysis. So for the amplicon sequencing, the targeted approach, uh, often we use the 16S or 18S uh, ribosomal RNA gene for this. Um, the reason this gene is often chosen is because it is um, present in all bacteria, but not um, eukaryotes or environmental fungi and plants. So you really target only um, the bacteria that you want to sequence and archaea. Um, the other reason why this is very um, suitable gene is because it has highly conserved regions. So th that makes it easy to target, to find these, um, these genes across all bacteria. And in between these um, highly conserved regions are highly variable regions. And these regions you can use to distinguish between different uh, taxonomic, um, different microbio, my, microbes. Um, so often you sequence across several of these uh, V regions. So these V1 to V9 are the variable regions. So you might sequence V1 and V2 this section or you might sequence uh, V3, V5, this whole section, or this V6, uh, V8. So typically you don't sequence the entire gene, but um, one or more of these variable regions. Um, and this allows you um, to 
distinguish, usually you can't go further than genus level, so you can't go down to uh, the level of species dif differentiation, uh, but down to genus um, is very doable and, and for many use cases this is enough. Okay, so amplicon sequencing, some of the pros are it's very well established, it has been used for a long time, um, it's not very expensive, um, there are many tools available that can do the analysis, many reference databases that can be used. Some of the downsides are that the choice of which V region you choose to sequence may bias your results, so some um, microbes might be easier to differentiate between than others depending on which V region you choose. And like I said, um, this is based on very highly conserved genes, so it is hard to resolve down to species or strain level, and usually um, genus level differentiation is the best you can do. And of course you can only uh, identify, so you can only do taxonomic pro uh, profiling, you can don't have extra functional information about maybe um, what these microbes are up to um, or any mutations in certain genes. Then the other approach, shotgun metagenomics, um, here you sequence all genetic material. Well some of the pros here are that you are not biased by um, the anthocon primer set, so which V region you choose. Um, you are also not limited by conservation of the anthocon. And you get more information, so you can also provide functional information about um, the, the activity of these microbes. Um, some of the cons, now since you're not targeting, you will get some contamination from the host, so say you are sequencing human microbiome, you will get some contamination from human cells. Um, if you're sampling environmental samples, you will get some contamination from uh, surrounding plants and fungi maybe. Um, it's also more expensive because we're sequencing more, the data analysis is more complex because we have to um, distinguish um, or reconstruct all this genetic material into the um, different genomes. And because of that more complex data, data analysis you need high performance computing, more memory and more compute capacity. Now the whole end-to-end -end, um, analysis here uh, looks a little bit like this, you start with taking your sample, um, you extract it, you amplify it, you do the sequencing, and then comes the bioinformatics, and as always the choices you make in each of these steps can uh, affect your downstream results, so you have to be very aware of choices you make in each step. Now the bioinformatics in this case is a big part um, of your experiment, so there are a lot of sequences being generated and they come from a lot of different genomes, so um, bioinformatics is really important and it can sometimes feel like you're drowning in sequencing data, so we need some good tools uh, and approaches to resolve this. Here's an overview of the analysis pipelines, so for Amplicon sequencing, uh, in both cases we start with pre-processing, so this um, uh, means cleaning our data and assessing the quality. Um, for Amplicon sequencing we will uh, remove some other um, sequencing artifacts that may arise called chimeras. We will cluster very similar sequences uh, into OTUs, this stands for operational taxonomic units, which are just clusters of very um, similar sequences. And we assign a taxonomy to these clusters, and then we do some visualization. For shotgun, this is uh, very similar on the left side, but on the right side you see we can do an additional functional um, analysis. Pre-processing is very similar to what you've seen in other analyses, I'm sure. This is a fast QC plot of the, um, the sequencing read quality and very typical as with other experiments is that towards the end of the read, so here is position one of the read on the left and the higher position is on the right, the quality drops off, so you might want to do some um, filtering and trimming of this data before we start. Then another thing that can happen with uh, amplicon sequencing is that uh, during PCR 
um, amplification here. Um, something can go wrong, which will lead to sort of hybrid sequences that come from two different reads originally, and they're called chimeras. And we want to make sure to get rid of those from our um, sequence before we uh, do our full analysis. Then the next step will be to cluster highly similar um, sequences into OTUs, operational taxonomic units. So often you see this 97% identity threshold use. So that means that any two sequences that are 97, at least 97% identical will sort of be grouped together. Um, and here you see um, a schematic of that. And using this 97% identity threshold indicates that we are going down to genus level. So these, um, these clusters then each represent um, a taxonomic unit, a genus unit, which we'll try to assign to a specific taxonomy. Uh, so then we take these, these clusters, we take um, the sequences from each of these clusters and we try to assign a taxonomy. For this, we have um, reference databases we can use. So Anthcon sequencing is very established. So these reference databases are very mature. Um, so there are two main ones, Silva and Green Genes. I think um, Green, Silva is a little bit more updated nowadays than Green Genes. So we'll be using that in the tutorial also. And for shotgun sequencing, uh, we have the Metaflan database which has a very large number of marker genes to, to aid in identification. But of course, again, the choice of which database you use can affect uh, what you find, because you only find what you, what you look for in this approach. Um, and these databases are invariably incomplete. So just be aware of, of this uh, factor. Okay, so there are different um, functional databases as well for um, shotgun sequencing to uh, identify gene families or groupings on other functional categories, uh, such as KEG uh, gene ontology. And you can uh, also do a pathway reconstruction of this. Now, the final results. Um, for taxonomic identification will be the OTU table. So I uh, already mentioned that we're clustering sequences into OTUs. So OTUs are just groups of very similar sequences. And then we're assigning um, taxonomy to those. So at the very end, we have this OTU table. Um, each line represents a different OTU, a uh, different um, microorganism. And you see here the name of the OTU, the number of times it was observed. So this can be used to um, say something about relative abundance of these different uh, organisms. And then the full taxonomy. So here we see that the most prevalent um, organism in our sample here was uh, Staphylococcus, and then Listeria, and then um, Streptococcus, and so on. So this can be very useful, for example, in healthcare, if a patient comes in with an infection, often you just want to know which infectious agent is present so that you know um, what antibiotic to, to give the patient. So here we don't need the um, full functional information, perhaps that shotgun might, might have given us, but if we know, okay, their staphylococcus is causing this infection, that's enough for a treatment plan. Of course, if you would like more information, for example, um, are these, um, these microbe um, organisms, are they resistant to certain um, antibiotics? Do they have antibiotic resistant genes? Then you would need more information than amplicon sequencing can give you. So that's when shotgun sequencing uh, comes in handy. And after all is done, um, it's always nicer to have a visualization uh, rather than looking at this table. So we also show you Crona is a very nice um, tool for this and to, look, to interactively explore these plots. So you can click here on these different um, these different uh, taxonomic levels to explore your sample. And we will show that in the tutorial as well. 
Uh, Finch is another, it's an online tool that um, is very good. At, so Krona lets you really explore a single sample while Finch is made for multi-sample analysis. So these have some nice graphs to show um, how different samples compare. Okay, and with that, um, I hope to see you at the tutorial. Thank you.